August 10, 2016. Day 4, Kabul. Today, I wanted to see the city, so I decided to roam around locally and do some sightseeing around Kabul. Here was the Kabul Water Park, another family attraction. My first stop in the morning after having a melon for breakfast was to meet a French world traveler living here. Hey, how are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm good, thanks. Okay, great. What's your name? Mirai. Okay, where are you from? I'm French. And how long have you been in Afghanistan? I've been in Afghanistan now since one year. One year? That's pretty good. That's longer than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I came like here actually as a, as a tourist, but oh, really? uh, well, I decided to stay here. Then you informed me to get the local clothes the first Yeah, day. you better. <laughs> that was the best suggestion. <laughs> they don't understand tourism here, that's the problem. Well, well, because the war has been, you know, uh, affect the people for so long, like yeah. they can't even imagine people come here and even want to stay. But they, they really like foreigners. Mm. That's the only opportunity they can really like yeah. with them. So no, no, it's more maybe they're shy as well, but mm, they're happy okay. to see you, I'm sure. How many countries have you been to? Around a hundred. But you're not trying to visit all the countries? No, I mean, I'd like to, <laughs> but uh, you know, I'm, I don't have any rush. I mean, oh, just rush. like go, yeah. go with the flow. I'm happy to live in some countries. Mm, I'm happy okay. to pass few days in some others. It just depends, but so far, uh, I hope I will. My host said that he hosted this 63-year-old woman and her nephew. And she has been to 185 countries. So she's only 11 countries away and she's trying to finish by 65. <laughs> yeah, it's never too late, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I want to finish the sooner the better because then you have stories for the rest of your life. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Thank you. After meeting with Melanie, I continued on my walk to the Kabul Zoo. But along the way, I decided to stop for coffee at this local restaurant. Looking at the menu was fun in foreign countries. Here, they had soap on the menu. Oops, I guess they meant soup. Instead of ordering a boring Americano coffee, I decided to be local and order number six, an Afghano coffee. I walked through the streets of Kabul and searched for the zoo because I wanted to see what kind of animals Afghans kept in their zoo. From the zoo, I could see TV Mountain and the many houses built on the hillside. As usual, security was everywhere in the city. In a city full of chaos, it was nice coming to the zoo for some tranquility. Families came to show their children the animals, and others came to use the grounds as a park and take a nap like this guy. The zoo was an oasis of green in a dusty city. Inside the zoo was a huge monument dedicated to the animal martyrs that died during the Kabul bombings, such as a 25-year-old elephant called Hathi who was killed when a rocket attacked the zoo. I was sure glad to experience this part of the city. This zoo opened in 1967 but suffered significant damage during the 1990s civil war. Nowadays, restoration was in progress. People enjoyed coming here because it provided a refuge from the traffic, noise, and chaos of the city. This brown bear was famous among the locals. The Taliban, who took control of Kabul in 1996, initially thought the zoo was incompatible with their version of Islam, but they kept it open after the zoologist Sherek Omar confirmed through research at the Kabul University that the Prophet Muhammad himself kept pets. They were just trying to keep the rules as best they could. One of the unusual animals I saw in the zoo was the rabbits. Sadly, during the 1990s civil war, combatants would storm the zoo and take the deer and rabbits for food. That's right, the plain domestic rabbit was on display in the zoo. This sign read, Hunting animal is a betrayal to a future generation. Here was some benches to sit down, and behind was a zoo canteen. Here were some outrageous pictures of how big the ice cream was in Afghanistan. This ice cream man was so professional that he didn't even have to look at the customer as he handed the ice cream cone to them. I wanted to hike up the hill to visit this castle. This is a castle built by one of the old kings, but now it's a military fortress. So now here at the Kabul Zoo. I've been here for the last couple hours. It's kind of like a family park slash zoo. I've been keeping a little profile here and not really talking, so not to attract too much attention because people look at me and I have the normal clothes, but then my shoe looks different, so they notice that's different and they, you're supposed to wear sandals here. Then it was time to visit the amusement park in the zoo. This was the swinging ship. The ferris wheel didn't seem to be as popular. That's right. Then I saw the domestic pig. But this was a special one. The highlight of the entire zoo was the one and only pig in Afghanistan named Khanzir, who was given by the government of China in 2002. Thus, he was at least 14 years old. He was completely safe in the zoo because he was in a Muslim country where nobody ate pork. Good old Porky. 
He was hungry as he ate on his knees and didn't want anyone disturbing his meal. My friends back home told me not to take the crowded buses, but when Shakir came to meet me outside the zoo, we took a bus to reach the city center, and I was all excited about it. Um, is this a bus or what? It's a bus. So we're taking a bus in Kabul? Yeah, in Kabul. <laughs> now we are going to bus uh, to reach the city. Yeah. It's like some nice bus. We left the zoo to check out downtown. I wanted to find an Afghan restaurant to try out some local food and see the market life. We passed by a pedestrian-only bridge. I guess they didn't want cars blowing up on this bridge. And again, this was TV Mountain, where all the antenna towers were located. At the cafe, we ordered cheer, the local Afghan ice cream. Here, they served it with eight scoops of ice cream built into a pyramid on the plate. From the cafe, I looked down at the marketplace. There sure seemed to be a lot of wheelbarrows going around. Talk about wheelbarrow traffic. Next, I decided to walk through the crowded marketplace to get a feel for the environment. Outside the marketplace and in the streets, it was still busy. Everyone was going here and there. Everyone was moving. There was never a dull moment in Kabul. I love the Afghan ice cream music. Both of us didn't feel like eating ice cream, but we bought an ice cream just so we could listen to the music. After our time in the center, we searched for a minivan to take back home. Taking a bus in Kabul, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I think it's our uh, last time. Too. So nice to meet you and thanks for your help. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. After my first day in Kabul, I was getting to know my way around town. I stopped by the parsley, scallion, onion, and radish vendor to ask to get a photo with him. I stopped by a juice bar to buy a glass of fresh Afghan carrot juice. They had a big block of ice on top to keep the carrots cold. Staying healthy in Afghanistan. Back at my local accommodations, I had dinner with my host. This is the place where I'm staying at. So I'm sleeping on the right side. So we got this window and you can see up here it says Oxford Cambridge Language Center. The ironic part was their language school misspelled language, but no biggie. It was just an English school. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for day 5 when I go to visit Pagman in the west of Kabul in the morning, then take a taxi to visit Jalalabad's famous White House restaurant and meeting their security guards.